role in reducing gun violence, and we are going to make sure our hospitals and mental health professionals get the resources they need. Our existing hospital-based violent intervention programs are an important front line response to these individuals and individuals who enter our hospital system with criminal or behavioral issues. These programs bring together hospital staff and law enforcement and community partners to provide support to violently injured people. Engaging patients in the hospitals during their recovery is a real opportunity to improve lives and reduce retaliation and recidivism. The health department would expand this intervention program to 10 additional hospitals in the communities experiencing high rates of gun violence. My administration would also redirect resources from the Mayor's Office of Community Mental Health, formerly known as Thrive NYC, into areas of immediate need. This would include support for those experiencing homelessness on their streets, especially those in urgent need of mental health care. We must also strengthen our legal response to those who are in active crisis and in danger to themselves and others. To serve them and protect others, we need a new system with comprehensive mental health support, especially through an infusion of federal support and funding. We need a humane and legally informed response to people in need who refuse treatment, especially those with a documented history of violence. We can't continue to allow those who could pose a danger to themselves or others to remain untreated. We need our state and federal partners to fund these crucial resources, including hospital beds and trained support staff. And finally, we would create a quality of life task force that would include senior leaders of the New York City Police Department, Department of Sanitation, and DHS, as well as mental health experts and additional city leaders as needed. The mission of this task force would be to have law enforcement and mental health professionals work together in areas where the homeless and mentally ill congregate and make sure they are being offered the resources they need. Each of these steps would make a critical difference, but city government alone cannot solve a crisis that has reached across our nation. We would need support from New York State, federal partners, district attorneys, the U.S. Southern and Eastern, Dist Eastern District Courts, as well as all New Yorkers. I express my thanks to Governor Kathy Hochul and the entire New York State lawmakers for their support of our city in this time of crisis. Your partnership is going to make sure we move forward during this time and I know we can work together to swiftly enact legislation and promote policies that will make it easier for our city to prosecute gun crimes. The Interstate Task Force on Illegal Guns is an important first step. But we must also address bail reform and our pretrial pre detention system. First, we must allow judges to take dangerousness into account. New York is the only state in the country that does not allow a judge to detain a defendant who poses an immediate threat to the community. 49 other states, as well as the federal government, allow judges to consider a defendant's dangerousness. New York must catch up. Judges must be able to evaluate a defendant's criminal history and the circumstances of the alleged crime to detain those individuals who pose an immediate threat to the safety of the community. We must also look at raise the age legislation, which is being used as a loophole for gang members to demand young people under 18 take the fall for guns that are not theirs. My administration is not seeking to punish young people, but when it comes to guns, you, we must make sure there are consequences. Far too many men above the age of 18 are victimizing children by forcing them to carry the weapons. This is evidenced by the statistics. In 2019, 2.5% 2 of all youths under 18 who were arrested had a firearm. In 2021, that number was 10%. 
children are being used as pawns. If a 16 or 17 year old is arrested on a gun charge, the NYPD should ask the individual where they got the gun from. If the individual refuses to disclose that information, prosecutors should have the ability to charge the individual in criminal court rather than family court. We must also re-examine the 2019 reforms to the discovery process. We must allow district attorneys to move forward earlier with gun charges, removing disclosure requirements that jam up the process, and we urge the state to pass legislation to that effect. And we must raise the penalty for gun trafficking. Currently, a gun trafficker on our streets won't fa face a Class B felony until they sell 10 guns in one year, period. We need to lower that number to three. And if you are in possession of three or more guns, this should be a presumptive evidence of gun trafficking, not just possession. And when I, as mayor, make judicial appointments, this would be a top priority in consideration. Those who demonstrate a commitment to keeping violent criminals who use guns on New York City streets, I would take that into factor. Our city is coming out of a long period of uncertainty and trauma. This pandemic has frayed the social safety net at every level and has had a last, long lasting damaging impact on our justice system. Our court system is operating at a fraction of its previous capacity and it has put our communities at risk. In the first half of 2019, New York City courts rendered 405 criminal verdicts. In the first half of 2021, these same courts rendered only 18. This is currently a backlog. Right now we have a 4,000 gun cases in the New York State court system. So I am saying to our lawyers, our legal aides, our defenders, I am strongly encouraging you all to get back to work. And we must immediately look at the things that are holding up our system, including changing the current social distancing requirements. Already in our public schools, we have moved from a six-foot rule to a three-foot rule. If it's good enough for our children, it should be good enough for all of us. The current rules are causing us to use two courtrooms for our trials. Changing these rules will allow jurors to sit together in one courtroom and expand our court capacity. We must also immediately work through the DNA testing backlog that has held up too many gun cases. This must be done by any means necessary, including use of forfeiture funds or federal stimulus money. Our city's five district attorneys are critical partners in public safety efforts, and we are asking them to also consider the following actions. First, we ask that they triage gun charges to expedite the process. If a district attorney's office pursues a charge related to gang or gun violence, moving it to the front of the docket, much, the, much as the same way hospitals triage patients with life-threatening conditions ahead of those with less in need. It would serve as a crucial step towards getting guns off our streets faster. We also propose a weekly meeting between all five district attorneys, the deputy mayor of public safety, and the police commissioner to review issues from the previous week, highlight needs, and identify the best ways to support each other moving forward. Finally, we will work with the courts and chief judge to see if we can increase the number of judges who are part of the state's gun violence initiative. We need every judge we can get here in these cases and helping us move through this immense backlog. Everything I have spoken of so far will make a difference in how we can keep our city safe from guns. But no matter how effectively we get guns off our streets, more just keep coming in. The iron pipeline keeps them coming. The gun violence crisis has hit New York City painfully, but we are far from alone. In the wake of COVID, major cities and localities nationwide have seen alarming rises in shootings, gun incidents, and violence. Gun violence is a public health crisis, and it is one that must be addressed at every level of government. It is time for our federal leaders to rise to the occasion and pass common sense legislation 
that is supported by an overwhelming majority of Americans. In addition to enhancing partnerships with federal law enforcement described above, we must see immediate action from Congress on guns. We must pass legislation requiring background checks on all gun sales. We must pass legislation to make gun trafficking a federal crime. We must increase penalties for those directly involved in moving guns across state lines and the organizers of gun trafficking rings. We must increase, penal increase penalties for those making straw purchases or buying firearms from someone legally prohibited from doing so. And we must also mobilize the Department of Justice against the proliferation of ghost guns, the new threat we are facing. These actions are only a start, but they will create critical momentum that will help New York City and all cities. We have a great deal of support in Washington for our cause. I am thankful for all the support we have gotten from President Joe Biden and his entire administration. He understands what is at stake, but with an opposition party who is dedicated to only that opposition, we must find other ways. As I said to my fellow mayors in D.C. last week, cities must lead. Mayors must lead. We are proud to be a member of Mayor's Alliance of Legal Guns, and we must all work together. But New York, as your mayor, this is my number one priority, keeping you safe. I campaign on it. I will deliver on it. This blueprint to end gun violence will not end this crisis overnight. But it will represent the biggest action in years to protect New York City by marshalling the collective actions of many stakeholders and massive resources. My administration will push to implement this, implement this plan in the coming weeks and months with our partners in Albany and Washington, D.C. We will never stop. We will never stop fighting to protect New Yorkers. New York City has come a long way, but we did a lot of hard work to become America's safest big city, and we were, we were not going to let that slip away. Not on my watch. You have my word as your mayor and as a fellow New Yorker. On Friday, Officer Jason Rivera will be laid to rest. I will be there. As a city, we will mourn together. We will celebrate his life and pay tribute to his heroism. And in his memory, and in the memory of all those who have been killed by gun violence, New York, we will rise again, rise up to protect each other, rise up to defeat gun violence, rise up to defend the way of peace and the work of prosperity. This is our moment. This is our city. Thank you, New Yorkers.